Uh, good afternoon, dear friends. Ukraine Media Center continues its work. Uh, we are supported by the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine and Ministry of Internal Affairs of Ukraine. And right now in our studio we have Alexander Matuzianik, spokesman of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, who will tell us about the situation on the front lines at the moment. You're welcome. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. I'd like to share with you information about Russian military aggression in Ukraine. Information as of today, as of noon today, 22nd day of April. Russia continues its wide-scale uh, armed aggression against our country. The enemy carries out offensive operations in the eastern area of operations, and the main goal of that offensive is taking full, full control over the territories of Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts, as well as maintaining ground corridors of the occupied Crimea. Uh, the command of the Russian army uh, uh, establishes the uh, preferable locations for main offensive. It's confirmed by the tools of firing uh, arrangement of their troops, uh, lining them and uh, continuous offensive operation in some areas. The highest level of activity of the occupiers is seen uh, in the direction of Izum and Barvinkova around Papasna railway hub, Severodonetsk urban area, around city of Mariupol, as well as uh, at the Parisian Donetsk highway. Now about the operational situation. In southern Buga area, the enemy tries to improve its tactical situation and strengthen its positions at the administrative boundaries of Kherson Oblast. To that end, the enemy continues strengthening its group of troops, uh, adding new troops uh, and uh, accumulating rockets, uh, ammo and fuel. In Slobozhanshin area, a group of the 6th Army of Western Military District continues partial siege of Kharkiv, actively using artillery and aviation. Near Balaklia and Lazava, the enemy has been uh, strengthening its positions and fortifying them. Around Izum and Barvinkova, Russian units from the 1st Tank Army, 20th Army of the Western Military District, 35th Army and 68th Corps of the Eastern Military District carry out offensive operations, including those aimed at taking control of railways. According to Ukrainian intelligence, in Belgorod Oblast of Russia, there has been mass scale taking of blood from people for needs of Russian armed forces. In Severodonetsk area, the enemy's units uh, carry out assault operation around Zarichne and try to move towards Rubizhne. In southern Buga area, the occupier's troops from their southern military district focuses its main attempts at improving its tactical situation, maintaining uh, their positions and uh, making the maximum fire impact on our troops. Also, the enemy continues its assault around villages of Pravdina, Tavrysk, and artillery shelling towards Shevchenkove and Ternovipode. In Volyn, Police and Siversk uh, areas, uh, at the moment, some units of Belarusian armed forces continue implementing assignments on strengthening the Belarus-Ukraine border in Brest and Homel oblasts. It's worth noting that Russia is using Belarusian territory to the full extent for all types of intelligence and reconnaissance. In Black Sea and the Azov areas of operation, groups of enemy ships in Black Sea and Sea of Azov isolate the combat area, do, uh, doing some reconnaissance and providing fire support uh, in coastal areas. As of now, in Black Sea, there are two ships which carry caliber cruise missiles. Their total launch capacity is up to 16 rockets. At the same time, in the territories of Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts, over the last day, our defenders have repelled 10 attacks by Russian occupiers, destroyed six tanks, eight armored vehicles and 15 cars and trucks, as well as four artillery systems. Armed forces of Ukrainian armed forces uh, jointly with uh, air defense units of ground forces and uh, 
Paratroopers, uh, the Marines and National Guard over the last day downed 15 targets of the enemy, including nine UAVs, three airplanes and three helicopters. A couple of words about illegal activities of Russian occupiers. The enemy continues its uh, rocket strikes, bombing and artillery shelling against residential uh, buildings in Kharkiv, Luhansk and Donetsk Oblast, as well as infrastructure facilities. Russian occupiers have been using the tactics of terrorizing Ukrainian citizens. There are still killings, torture, persecution of local self-government and priests, taking local companies under the uh, uh, spices of nationalization, blocking of evacuation routes and humanitarian aid routes. Occupiers have been blocking all humanitarian can cargos from government-controlled territory of Ukraine directed that occupied or uh, surrounded towns and villages. The enemy is preparing for so-called a referendum for occupied territories to, in Kherson of the Parisian Oblast to join the Russian Federation. To that end, uh, the continue active information campaign in territories under their control. And to, re to replenish their personnel, there have been preparations for so-called mobilization in Kherson and the Parisian Oblast. Russian troops are blocking uh, local people from leaving occupied territories, in particular uh, those uh, males of conscript age. Total losses as of today have been announced by general staff. So thank you for attention. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to heroes. Dear colleagues, you're welcome to ask your questions. Please use the microphone. Are there any questions? Uh, good afternoon. I'm Viktor Melnikov from CGTN. Could you please comment? If possible, a situation around Azovstal steel factory. You can. Uh, it's all clear. Their situation is difficult. I cannot share any additional information. Any more questions? TV. You said that Russians are using Ukrainians for blood donations. How do you know that, and what details can you give us on that? I'll clarify. According to our intelligence, in Belgorod Oblast of Russia, they are taking blood from locals, Russians, from Russians, from their locals. They take blood from their people for their army. It's in the Russian territory in Belgorod Oblast. Thank you. Any more questions? Sending Phoenix. Uh, the United States is going to be sending. They're called Phoenix Ghost. The U.S. is going to be sending Phoenix Ghost drones. Do you know how those are going to be used and when you'll have them? If such equipment arrives to Ukraine, it will be used according to its intended purpose to destroy Russian occupiers, their personnel and equipment. Uh, it will be used according to its purpose, intent purpose. I would like to thank, on behalf of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, the Ministry of Ukra uh, Defense and the whole Ukraine, I would like to thank all countries who have been helping Ukraine to resist enemy's aggression. We need weapons. No, we need weapons. Ukraine is not defending only its own territory. We defend the whole Europe and the whole civilized world against Russian occupation. And it's very important and it's worth understanding. So Ukraine does need weapons, including heavy weapons and aircraft and uh, radio electronic uh, warfare tools and very importantly, air defense tools in order to strengthen our air defense forces and protect, defend our cities against enemy's rocket strikes. Hello, Raymond Lübken, uh, Blick Media, Switzerland. Um, I want to ask, uh, can you tell us how many Russian soldiers and weapons are based in Transnistria? I don't have this information. I don't have this sort of information. 
Argentina from La Diaria Uruguay, South America. And the um, Chilean reporter, Gonzalo Lira, is reported dead. You know something about that? Sorry, could you repeat your question, please? I repeat, please. The death of the Chilean reporter, Gonzalo Lira, is reported dead like, since yesterday. No, I don't have this information, and I'm not authorized to comment on that. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, dear friends. Thank you, everybody, for being with us. You're welcome to monitor our announcements, and now we are developing our schedule of briefings uh, for tomorrow. So you're welcome to monitor our uh, Telegram channels, our YouTube, Twitter.